Up next, AMT's 1951 Chevy Fleet Line. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from HobbyLinkInternational.com and welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AMT 1951 Chevy Fleet Line. We're doing this one for the HobbyLink International Cars of the 50s group build. So if you're interested in that group build, you can go over to HobbyLinkInternational.com, click on group builds and rules, and you'll see all the group builds that we got going on this year, this being one of them. So I started the kit. I'm starting to clean this up. I'm trying to do a little bit better than I did on the 32 Ford 3 window. I've already run into some problems with the kit. So I'm going to show you the things I already did. This is going to be a pretty quick video and then I'll let you know what's good and bad so far. So let's get to looking at these guys right here. The first thing I worked on was the body of the 1951 Chevy Fleet Line. There was a lot of mold lines up here on the fender, up here on the fender. And again, this body had a huge lip like on the 32 Ford over here in arc and also seam lines or mold lines down here. And the same thing over here. I actually used the magic marker trick where you put the magic marker on the low side of the seam or the mold line and then you sand from the high side to bring it down and once you see that magic marker is gone then you know you're pretty much even just don't round or, or square off anything that's round here's actually a picture of what i was doing with the magic marker i also cleaned up the bottom over here where they just rip it off the sprues so we got that going on um there is one little deviation over here i don't think you can see it but they messed up the fin or the trim work over here there's a little divot in that so it's no big deal you're not really going to notice it too much hopefully i did do some other work on the chassis but i'll get to that in a minute the problem with this piece is this side is fine and this side is warped i'm probably going to have to take some heat to it and bend it out this way hopefully i can show you with the hood all right you can see on the passenger side it's pretty much even this is tough to do holding on to it and the driver's side is off if i twist the driver's side fender out like that you can see it evens up and that's what i'm going to have to do so hopefully i can get that done i'm definitely not going to leave the car like that if i can't get the car fender straightened out to this point then what I'm going to do is I may cut off this whole fender and make this into a rusty, junky car in a little bit of a diorama, but we'll see how that goes. The hood of the car was fine. There was some flash on the sides that I got rid of, but there were four nasty injector pin marks in there that I got rid of. Uh, it's still a little rough, so I got to texture that up a little bit because it was already pre-textured, so I'll finish that up, and then this will probably just be painted black. So this is the firewall. This is the next piece I'm going to clean up. You can see here and here, not these two, those belong there. But here and here are the two round discs. Those are the injector pin marks. So I'm going to have to clean those up and get this nice and smooth. This way that can uh, look a little better. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the wires. If I can find something thin enough and take pictures of this, I might sand it down and actually put rewire this whole thing up with real wire on there. So let's take a look at the chassis real quick before we go. So this is a chassis, plain and simple. I found one thing weird on it. Over here, hopefully you can see it, there's an actual weld bead line that they put in, but they didn't do it on the other side. So, or this is the side with it actually, and this is the side without it. I don't know why they did one without the other, but that's how they made it. I still have a few injector pin marks to take off on the inside. I know they're on the inside, but I'm going to take them off to make sure everything fits in there properly. And one of the other things I'm going to do in here, you can see hopefully the molded in lines. I'm definitely going to change the fuel line. I'm going to put a little piece of brass in there and bring out the fuel line. I don't know what these other twisted wires are, so I'm going to see if I can make something that looks twisted like that and put those in, and just to give it a little extra detail. One thing I did do was I put on the splash guard or the splash pan over here. It didn't fit right when I made it up with the body. It was either would be too short and the wheel wells would be off, or it would be too long and the wheel wells would be off. So I snapped it off. There's two little pieces here, which I'll try to get off. If not, it's no big deal it's underneath the car so i'm going to go with the valance cover on the back and we're not going to have the bumper sticking out that far so i got a lot more cleanup to do and that's pretty much it on what i'm doing on the car right now so if you made it this far into the video do me a favor put in the comment section below what color you think i should paint the car itself i'm leaning more towards a metallic green with a white interior and probably not even chrome trim but maybe a pearl white trim on this so we'll see if you have any ideas throw it in the comments section below i would love to hear from you also that's pretty much it on this build as i do more we'll take more video now that we have the new computer we're all set with that and hopefully tonight we'll have our wednesday night live stream going because optimum hasn't been the greatest but as always thank you very much for your support we appreciate you being here and i'll see you on the next video take care and bye-bye